What is going on guys? Today we are going to be doing Scream Troupier's player review. Obviously they have been out for a while and I believe they're only in packs until the end of tomorrow I want to say. It may be tonight but I'm pretty sure it's tomorrow uh, that everyone's in packs. And Trippier was one of them ones that to be honest his basic card is an 80 and it's not really there. We've got uh, Semedo who is an absolute animal as a right back in the La Liga and even his left back. Personally I play with him as a right back even though he is left back on his inform card and he's probably one of the best right back left backs that you can get at the minute. Um, I really really rate him. So for Trippier to actually even try and compete with his gold card was difficult only being 80 rated but this 85 right back card it's actually really nice. He's currently sitting at around about 70k on both consoles. Obviously, they do fluctuate a little bit. I believe I sold mine for 75 not that long ago. The upgrades on the card, again, is very impressive, and I think they've done very well. Um, I prefer that they've done a kind of a permanent upgrade rather than doing the 99s, even though for that brief period that, say, um, Busquets got 99 pace and 99 physical or 99 passing, it was good for that moment, but then the card becomes useless when he doesn't have a 99 stat. And it is the fun of the game, because then you kind of play with different players throughout the game. But it didn't really go that way. I think I prefer, personally, what they've done with the screen this year. With the upgrades, Trippier's got a 12 plus on his pace, 15 on his shooting, and 2 on the rest of his stats. Which make the card somewhat decent. 86 pace, which is alright for a right back, to be honest. He then has 80 defending and 74 physical, 83 passing, 78 dribbling, and 75 shooting, just to throw that in there. Overall, that stats are not terrible. For an 85 rated card, they seem a little bit lower. Obviously, only one stat is over over 85, and that is his pace. Everything else is relatively on the, the lower scale, the high 70s, the low 80s. So you may be thinking, well, is he really worth 70k? Personally, that's what we're going to be going through today and seeing... Is he worth 70k? And I'll give you my opinion on that anyway. Looking at the basic information of him, he's a three-star skiller, which to be honest, for a right back, I can kind of miss. Four-star weak foot, which is actually all right. He is right-footed, so his left foot is the four-star there. Five for eight, so not the tallest right back in the world. Don't expect him to be winning loads and loads of headers. Um, jumping and heading accuracy, again, is mid, mid, yeah, mid-70s. So again, not really amazing stats there. He does have a high attacking work rate with a medium defensive, so that's always something to consider. Um, because personally, if you let him free roam, he will tend to push up the pitch quite a bit, even though relatively he's decent on the ball. Either in this right back card, he's not terrible on the ball, which is always nice. A few standout stats that have kind of just randomly gone up. 90 attacking positioning, 93 shot power, and 90 stamina. The stamina part is the most um, effective for this card because obviously you're not planning on putting him up front or putting him as a cam or something like that. So they're relatively not very useful for this card. You're not expecting him to get into many attacking positions, especially when you don't want people countering you. So personally, for my left back and right backs, I have them as stay back, mainly because if you're getting them out of positions, they're always doing overlaps. A, they're going to get tired. Even with 90 stamina, it's going to deplete very quickly if you've constantly got them on overlaps. But it also gives a massive gap. And with pace this in this game, and especially the wing play that you can get, people are just going to absolutely dominate that. And if you play someone who's relatively got a good game on them, they're going to notice that. They're going to notice Trippier, whoever your left back is, is making them runs constantly and will just eventually just keep going down the wing, making that space, and you're pulling a defender out of position, and before you know it, he's cut inside, he's gone round your keeper, and he's scored a cheeky little back heel. So, for me, I keep them on and stay back. Personally, passing-wise, I think it's very good. I really rate his passing. All of it is predominantly 80, low 80s. Curve is 88 as well as crossing, so that's something decent. So if he does manage to get himself on a little cross, maybe you've got a little overlap once, and then you're kind of holding the possession, then a cheeky cross is going to be pretty decent. But... Again, the meta of the game is not heading. We know this by now. You'll probably score one out of 100 crosses you ever pass, or personally, I do anyway. I don't know if there's a little glitch to it or anything, but if you're going against a defender, you will not score that header. It seems very, very difficult to be able to do that when you're not, if you're not on a no man's mark in you, basically. If you're not on your own in that box, 
You're not going to get that header to score. I just, I can't do it. I don't think many people can do it. I've personally not been scored on with anything like that. More than likely, if they're going down the wing, it's going to be to cut in and then cross across box or pass it across box to get it to the player with an open net. That's personally one of the best tactics in this game. And to be honest, it works so well. If you get a right mid or a left mid that is that quick, you're going to be able to do it. If, if a guy is not defending very well, you'll easily break through that defense like that. Looking at his dribbling, 82 ball control, 74 composure, 74 balance, 74, oh no, 75 balance and 74 agility, and 79 reactions. It's all very average, I think, dribbling-wise. He's nice on the ball, but when it comes to actually trying to take people on, I probably would save that for your right and left mids, which probably you already do without me having to tell you. Um, Defending-wise, 80 interceptions, which is okay. 84 standing tackle, 81 sliding tackle. Again, very, very average. But obviously, we haven't put a chem style on, so bear with it for a second. 76 defensive awareness. 65 strength, 71 aggression, and 76 jumping. So you're probably thinking the stats are very low to average, to be honest. There's nothing really sticking out from this card. But the main thing is, is the chem style. That's where you make your money on these cards. If we go straight away for one of my favorite ones, Sentinel is quite a nice card in general. It put him up to an 88 rated right back, which is absolutely phenomenal. You would have to then kind of go with the 86 pace, you wouldn't get no pace increase, but defending would turn up to a 90, and physical would turn up to an 80, which is very nice stats then. You look at that straight away and you read 86 pace, 83 passing, 90 defending, and 80 physical. That makes it a lot more appealing, and I think that is the main thing about this game, and I think it's what EA have tried to do is make everyone relatively balanced on the no chem style, and then when you put the chem style on, then it kind of... It caters to your game. If you're good at maybe jockeying defenders, maybe not making people go through and you don't need the pace as much, then Sentinel would be the perfect way to go. If you was to put an anchor on him, it would turn him into an 87 right back. But you would get the 91 pace, 88 defending, and 78 physical. So again, you're getting some nice stats. It's not quite the defending of the Sentinel, but you do get that pace up to a whopping 91, like I, like I said. And that is sometimes what people like. Shadow-wise is an absolute absurdity. It would put him into an 89 right back. 97 pace, 99 acceleration, 96 sprint speed, and you'd also get the 88 defending. The defending's good enough. I think you'd have really good standing tackle at 89 and... Very good slide. Uh, did I say stand and tackle or slide and tackle? Stand and tackle would be 89. It's 96 slide and tackle. But the problem is, slide and tackling on this game is just not a thing. Personally, I can't remember the last time that I, I actually slid someone not to try and block the ball rather than actually tackle them. Unless I'm getting pretty peeved off and I just want to absolutely break someone's legs. That's a different story. That's not going to win the year the ball back. That's going to just get you a red card. And many a times I've done that. But... It does get him up to an 89 right back. The pace is absurd. That is just a, a phenomenal amount of pace for a right back. But you also do get a decent defending. For me, it would definitely be between the shadow and the sentinel. Sentinel would be for someone who's necessarily, if I'm going against someone, hasn't got the major, major wingers. Hasn't got Mane, hasn't got Salah, Messi, Neymar. I think you'd need a shadow if you're playing against them. And obviously, you can't choose in game. So that's something you'd have to be aware of. That you kind of just... See where you're going. If you're playing in foot champs, I possibly would go with a shadow on him. I think be safe. Make sure that you've obviously got the best of his ability on, on the field at that moment in time. You could come up against anyone, even if he had Felipe Anderson on to start with, and then he could swap them in-game. That's something to always be prepared for. And I think with the 97 pace, there is nobody getting past him. I think in general, I weren't really a fan of this card to start with, or at least when he first came out. I looked at him and thought... It just looks a pretty washed up card, to be honest. But actually, he's not terrible. He's, he's not a bad right back. Personally, I wouldn't say 70k is an amazing amount for him. It was better when I was first trying to do this video and he was about 150. So 70k for a right back that, yeah, you put a bit of special value on him because it is a special card and he's not going to be in packs forever. Um, but apart from that, personally, I do think he is better than Carvajal. I think Carvajal this year is 
not quite there for me. I, I don't know what it is. Normally, he's relatively sound. Very, he is very consistent, but I think personally, he does let through a lot. And I think Inform Sumedo is just absolute god tier in this game. I really rate him, and he's played so many games from him uh, for me. Seen as though I think he was in Team of the Week two or something like that, maybe even three. Um, but it was absolutely insane for me. So he's he's stayed on the pitch basically. 7 out of 10 for value for coins. Mainly the, the increase, I'd probably put it as a 5. But I think, given because he's a screen card, he's a special card, you add that little bit of value to him because he's not going to lose value. There's no way that this card is dropping below 50k when he goes out of packs because there's going to be no supply. Unless EA bring out maybe a Scream SBC or guaranteed SBC, then obviously it will drop. But predominantly, I can't see that happening. 6 out of 10 for foot champs. I think he's on the verge of average foot champs team to okay you're kind of building your team right there and a 6.5 overall for this guy's rating so hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did make sure you smash that like button we are so close to 4k i think we've got 60 to 70 subscribers left i cannot wait to hit that number hopefully you do subscribe after this if you have made it this far as well again have a good foot champs have a good day and i'll see you all for the next one peace